Hiking is a mode of transportation. Rucking is a means by which to improve that mode. What's up guys, I'm Randall. Welcome to the Grunt Proof Dungeon. We are continuing with a Ruck series. This is the video many of you guys have been waiting for. Today it's all about programming and progression. We're going to talk about a few of the key variables involved in rucking and how you can manipulate those to basically build your own rucking program. As I've said a few times, there are many variables you can play with when rucking. Those are your time allowed, the weight you're carrying, the distance you're going, and the terrain. There are a few other ways you can change up your rucking routine, but those are the basic ones. Rucking is mostly a cardio event. However, as far as progression and programming goes, it is more similar to weightlifting. Think about it. When you're just a jogger, you go out, you start off with one to two miles, you add the 1% every week. After a while, you're running five to 10 miles a couple times a week, and you kind of get stuck. You could add in hills and run a lot faster, do some sprints and all that kind of stuff. The average person does not. However, in the weight room, if you're doing like a typical strength program, doing it the right way, let's say for example, five by five programming, all you have to do when you come into the gym every week, you add a total of five pounds to the bar. That's a two and a half plate on each side and every week you will get stronger. That is why I compare rucking to weightlifting because it's so intense, all you have to do is manipulate one or two variables at a time in the smallest adjustment and you have almost a completely new workout. So let's get into how you can manipulate those variables and make that ruck even harder. First, as I always say, you should start rucking in boots and pants. If it's blazing hot, go to shorts, but always wear boots. If you're not doing that as a beginner, you're wearing silkies and tennis shoes, your first step is to progress to boots and pants. That is going to add weeks worth of new training for you. The other variable is speed or time. So I tell beginners to start off trying to walk the entire time and beat a 18 minute mile pace. The EIB standard is a 15 minute mile pace. As an example, the expert infantryman badge prerequisite ruck, you gotta complete 12 miles in under three hours. Do the math, that equates to no more than 15 minutes per mile. You can do that walking. So if you started off trying to beat that 18 minute mile pace just by walking, well, the next time you go out, everything remains the same, but now you're going to beat a 17 minute mile pace. Sounds easy, but trust me, it's not. And as you get better, stronger, and faster, you start to decrease that. Once you can beat a 15 minute mile pace, unless you want to start running and all that, which I recommend you save that for later, then you will start to mess with the other variables. Which means if you're always walking on concrete or a smooth surface, you can start to transition to more trails and rougher terrain. Keep in mind, if you overdo it, you're probably gonna develop some shin splints and you don't want to switch to rougher terrain while you're breaking in new boots. Just something to think about. As we're talking about trails and different terrain, another variable you can add in is hills. You could do hills or stairs, whatever you can to just climb an elevation. When I'm out in Germany, I generally like to pick a new mountain that I haven't climbed yet, and I will just start at the bottom and climb up to the top as quickly as I can. These mountain tops vary from about a mile and a half to sometimes a two and a half mile climb, and I will still try to beat that 15 minute mile standard, even going uphill. That's a little more for the intermediate and advanced people, but I would say beginners, if you're already fast enough and you're at your max weight, and you're looking for a way to make it harder, go find some hills. Once you get comfortable climbing hills with a ruck on, go for a certain distance and then enforce that 15 minute mile pace regardless of the hills. So all those variables I mentioned, you should try all of those before you begin running. Another variable is you could do what's called tempo training. This is usually applied to running where you keep a specific pace that's a little bit out of your comfort zone for an extended time. Could be five minutes for beginning runners or out to 40 minutes for people who are used to running. You're basically pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone just enough to make it harder, but not so crazy that you're gonna have to stop and walk because it was too hard. You can apply the same principle to rucking if you're climbing hills or you say, hey, you know what? Last week I did an 18 minute mile pace. Today I'm going to do a 16 minute mile pace. No excuses. 
that is already tempo training. Or climbing any tall mountain or a bunch of stairs at a decent pace, that's already going to smoke you for a long period of time. We're not talking about doing sprints where you just go all out for 30 seconds and then lollygag to catch your breath. Tempo training, it has to be just outside of your comfort zone, enough to push you, but not so bad that you have to stop and whine about it. So my last and absolute favorite variable to include in rucking is to combine it with other workouts. Basically, if you're used to a certain ruck workout, if you just add 15 minutes of some other kind of training, body weight stuff, some sprints, even just some push-ups and squats, it's going to smoke you on another level. To complete that ruck, it's going to be even harder. Again, that's kind of for the intermediate and advanced people. If you're a beginner, you can basically stick with those variables we talked about in the beginning. All right, guys, well, we're at that point. I'm just going to throw out a basic programming plan for you guys. We're gonna go through it beginner, intermediate to advanced. This is not an end all be all rucking workout. This is just a model plan to throw out to you guys, something that could get you started. I will also put links to each category. So if you wanna skip straight to the advanced, go check out that timestamp. For beginners, we're talking about the longest phase. I would count that as the first two months all the way out to six months, and in some cases, a year. If you're going from the couch to rucking, you're overweight, very out of shape, you're probably gonna be a beginning rucker from six months to a year. If you're already somewhat fit, pretty healthy, not overweight, you're looking at probably two to six months. That sounds like a long time to some of you guys, but it's right on par with weight training and running. You cannot just jump into any workout program 100% without hurting yourself. In the beginner phase, you want to rock at least once a week, no more than twice a week. And I would give plenty of time between each rock. Sometimes you're gonna be sore three days after a rock. So keep that in mind, no more than two times a week. So in the beginner phase, we're not going to mess with all those variables too much. We're going to focus on a few basics. Number one is going to be your form. So shoulders back and down, chest out. We're going to stand up like a proud person, lean forward slightly a little bit at the hips. And we're also talking about having our core engaged. Number two, similar to running, while we're rucking, we want to keep the fastest walking pace we can. If you don't know, the difference between walking and running is when you're walking, you always have one foot on the ground whether it's your toes or a heel. In running, at some point, both feet will be in the air. If you don't know how to picture a fast walk for a ruck, I always tell people to just walk like one of those angry cartoon characters that's just about to go tear somebody up. That's a good way to look at it. As far as weight goes, if you are a total newbie, you can start anywhere from 15 to 25 pounds. I wouldn't go over that because you have to give your bones, joints, tendons, ligaments, muscles, your back, your core muscles, you have to give your body plenty of time to adjust to walking with weight on it. So some of you big tough guys, you're gonna think, well, you know, I can start with 50 pounds, that's dumb. You're just asking to get yourself hurt. If you wanna do that, that's fine, I don't care, but I'm not telling anybody to do that. So beginners, anywhere from 15 to 25 pounds, if you're feeling pretty good and fit and you don't have any issues, you could probably get up to a max 30 pounds. You don't really need to go any higher than that as a beginner. You also should not run at all. You want to get your body used to walking like that. You're going to notice over time that you will develop blisters and hot spots and all that. Go check out the foot care video to learn more about that. So if you run, not only could you possibly hurt yourself with a shorter cadence while you're running, you don't have that long of a stride. So you're not going to give your feet a chance to develop those hot spots, possibly blisters, and turn into calluses. It's really that long stride that tears people's feet up the most. And you want to do that slowly and give your feet time to build up and strengthen for that. You can run enough later on. So here's a couple benchmarks for you beginners to know when you're actually doing well. Number one is if you can do four miles at your max weight as a beginner in less than an hour. So that is the 15 minute mile standard. If you can consistently do that without running, without crazy blisters or any kind of back pain the next day, then you are probably able to progress to the next level. Honestly, I would say if you can meet that time standard at about a 30 pound weight and the next day you're not waking up sore anymore, then you're ready to progress. So the intermediate phase, that is going to be anywhere from two to four months. For some of you guys, maybe six months. This is going to be the phase where we're gonna start implementing variables and you are also going to see 
the most growth. That means you're going to be putting a lot of stress on your body and you're going to have new issues develop. So coming from the beginner phase, you're going to start to notice new blisters and hot spots. You might be a little achy the next day. You're going to have some sore muscles. That's all part of the plan. If you wake up and you have severe back pain that lasts for a couple days, then you need to stop, probably go see a doctor and figure out what that is. I'm going to do a rucking core video. That's probably one of the best ways you can protect your back, but I am not a doctor. I can't tell you if you are physically able to ruck or not. Intermediate training, we're going to keep it between one and three times per week. And that's mainly because we're going to be messing with all kinds of other variables. More than three times per week could get you hurt. So like I said, for beginners, for the intermediate guys, if you're still sore after a couple days, you need to give yourself a little more time before you go on that ruck. As far as mileage goes, we're talking about no more than eight miles. That's your max. Your max weight should be 40 pounds. Now, I know that doesn't seem like a big jump between beginner and where you are now, but like I said, we're going to be including many variables in this stage, so you don't need to add a lot of weight. As a matter of fact, some guys that I've taught how to ruck, they would get up to 35 pounds in their beginner phase. Once we got into intermediate and started adding all kinds of other crazy variables, they had to drop their pack weight back to 20 pounds. My recommendation is you take those variables I mentioned in the beginning and you add one at a time. So every time you go out to ruck, you're adding a new variable. The other ones can stay the same, you're fine. So if you're doing three rucks a week, you're talking about three different variables all throughout the week. It's gonna be a workout. So do not add all the variables into one workout. It's gonna be a smoker and it's gonna be fun, but there's no point in doing that. Why do that when you don't have to? Add one variable at a time, you're good to go. If you're otherwise healthy and fit, you have no issues and you have an awesome running form, you could probably start to mix in a little bit of interval runs. But you're gonna to have to remember on the last ruck, if you added more weight, you should probably drop your weight back down to where you came out of the beginner phase because there's no point in running with extra weight. And I would suggest you do a three or four to one rest to work ratio. I like to jog for about a minute and then I'll rest for three minutes. That's my favorite. You can play with times like that. Just know that you need a lot more recuperation time. The main reason you want your rest time really long is because if you just keep pounding away after the miles running, your running form is going to deteriorate. So you wanna make sure you're pretty well rested before you start to jog again. On that note, we're not sprinting and we're not doing any kind of big hoppy jumps. This is kind of like, if you guys ever heard of the airborne shuffle, it's a little more like a trot. So if you're already a pretty good runner, you know to keep your head level and look at the horizon and you want to imagine that your head is a camera and you're not bouncing too much. So if you're running and it's like that and you can barely see, you probably shouldn't be running. Now we're starting to pound out the variables and add miles. You need to be prepared to do more hotspot taping and some intro ruck taping as well. That means while you're on the go, you're gonna to start to notice new hotspots because you've upped the training. So bring some medical tape or duct tape, whatever you like to put on your feet. And once you start to feel a hot spot, don't worry about your time or anything. Sit down, take your boot off, do what you gotta do, and then move out. It's better to address those as soon as possible. So your benchmark as an intermediate is you can complete eight miles in under two hours. That's the EIB standard. And here's the twist. If you can complete eight miles in under two hours, despite any variables you add in, then you are ready to progress. Guys, there is no ego in this world. There's only people who do it right and people who go to the emergency room and can't ruck for the next year and then have to start all over or give it up completely. Nobody cares about your ruck time, your ruck weight, or how many miles you go. Nobody cares. My example workout would be eight miles under two hours and I'm going to add a few variables. So we're talking about hills, weight, and I'm gonna run a little bit. Once you can do that consistently, mixing and matching variables and do those eight miles in under two hours, you are ready to move on. So keep in mind guys, just like any other workout program, especially with rucking, growth is not a linear function. That means you might go from beginner to intermediate to advanced, take a couple months off, you need to go right back to late beginner or early intermediate phase. Again, there's no ego here, guys. Nobody cares about your weight or miles. If you do have to take some time off, 
and you want to see where you might be in those phases to where you can start again, here's a good test. Do four miles in, guess what, under an hour with 35 pounds. If you could do that comfortably without running and you have no blisters or joint pain or anything serious the next day, then you can probably start off in the intermediate phase again. All right, advanced people, if you're watching this, you are either ready to hit it hard or you're just curious and skip to the end, but don't start here if that's you. So I'm gonna start off with your advanced benchmark first. I've mentioned it so many times. If you can do your benchmark for advanced level is if you can complete 12 miles in under three hours, despite the variables. It may be a 40 pound ruck, it may be on hills, it may be a 40 pound ruck plus hills, doesn't matter. You can do all that in under three hours, 12 miles, you're good to go. And I mean, no blisters, no crazy soreness, no weird stuff. You should be able to wake up the next day. You might be a little bit tight, but you're good to go for whatever the day throws at you. You are advanced. As I mentioned in the intermediate section, progress is not linear. So just because you reach the advanced phase does not mean you get to sit there and hang out forever. Although the intermediate phase is the hardest and you see most of the growth there, you're gonna have to work the hardest in the advanced phase and you're also going to have to work harder to remain in that phase. As soon as you take a couple weeks off, you need to go back to that 12 miler in three hours and see how you feel. If you bust that time or you have a bunch of crazy blisters or something hurts the next day, you're no longer advanced. And guys, once again, there's no egos here. If you get into the advanced phase one year, the next year you have to start as a beginner, nobody cares. In the advanced stage, we're still going to keep a max of three rucks per week. That's because we're doing a lot of crazy stuff. So we're talking about 40 pounds and beyond, and we're talking about up to 12 miles, and in some cases, even longer. For me personally, I usually don't go over 15 miles, and I usually don't go over a 40 pound ruck. If you're actually going to ruck three times a week, you need to consider your mileage. I would not do any more than 25 miles in a week. If you're training for some kind of crazy event, a crazy army school, or like one of those go ruck events, you could probably bump it up to 30 miles a week, but you have to consider all the stress it's gonna put on your body. You don't wanna hurt yourself trying to get to that event and then you can't even attend that event. Miles and weight does not equal ready for one of those crazy events. You're better off being able to do all of that safely and kind of comfortably without getting hurt and you're gonna be able to push through that pain on those longer events. So no more than 25 miles a week, you can split that up between two or three rucks, however you want. I like to do a 12 miler at the end of my workout week and that's kind of just my final week finisher. Throughout the week, I like to do shorter rucks. You also have to keep in mind your time. If you're gonna do more than 12 miles, you're talking about more than three hours out of your day. That's another reason I don't do a lot of big rucks anymore because I have a family. So <laughs> sometimes I can't just get five hours off to go rucking all the time. So basically all that means a lot of mileage does not make you cool. Most of us grunts are more impressed by people who can do a 12 miler in three hours without killing themselves and they can actually get out of bed and function the next day. That's a hell of a lot more impressive than somebody who just goes out there and murders themselves and they're in bed for the next week. That's not cool. That's actually kind of dumb. One thing you should probably implement as you're an advanced and even in the later stages of intermediate, you should plan and enforce some deload weeks. I'm rucking, I'm weight training, I'm running, I'm doing all these other outdoor activities. And for all those activities, somewhere I will find at least one week where I will not do that activity. Sometimes I'll take a whole week off. I won't do any kind of actual training. I'll go play with my kids and ride the bike and stuff for recreation, but I'm not actually pushing myself into 80% or higher in any kind of workout. That's good for your body. You get a long break off, your body gets to rest a little bit. It's not constantly trying to grow. You might actually take that week off and all of a sudden you'll learn about some kind of injury that was kind of hidden because you kept going. Well, that's the perfect time to go see the doctor, figure out what it is and address it. And then you're probably gonna be good to go from there. I know once you're making serious progress, you don't want to stop. Everybody's like that when they start a workout program. But trust me guys, a week or two weeks off, it's gonna suck, you're gonna hate it, but take that time off. You can still go walking around, you can still go hiking, but you're not actively rucking, pushing yourself to the max. After that week or two of a deload or rest, once you actually start again, you are going to feel so much better than when you started that rest 
and you'll thank me then because now you're really going to be able to hit it hard. When we're talking about advanced, we're talking about every other ruck or every week, you're going to manipulate as many variables as you can. So you can add weight, add hills, shorten your time, run a lot more. When it comes to running, I would never suggest anybody actually try to run an entire ruck. Even if you are an ultra athlete, it's very hard with weight on your back to keep solid, good running form for an extended period of time. So if you're gonna run a lot, just make sure you take plenty of rest and make sure you feel pretty rested before you start to jog again. I mentioned the 12 miler benchmark to get into advanced. So what is a good benchmark to know that you are a true rucking badass? Well, I will refer you guys back to the original Expert Infantryman's badge. They had the 12 miler, all the other tasks they had to perform and test on. And then once they were done testing on the stations, they had to go right into a 25 mile ruck march and they had eight hours in which to do this. I've done it a couple times on my own for fun and I also did one for charity down on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. I essentially walked most of the Mississippi Gulf Coast. It was June so it was hot as hell but I did it. I did it with a 55 pound ruck but that's because I started with six liters of water and that's on top of stopping at water stations to refill because guys Mississippi heat will kill you. As I finished and my water was totally empty, I ended with about 32 pounds. I did meet the time standard though. I finished in about 750 something minutes, right on the borderline, but I was proud to do that. So advanced people, if you think you're gung-ho enough, go out and beat 25 miles in eight hours. Let me know if you do, and that is super cool. That's just more for fun though, so don't think you have to go out there and kill yourself for 25 miles just to impress me. Like I said, I don't really care. These days, I'm impressed by people who can perform these tasks without getting hurt. That is cool. Well, that's it, guys. I know this was a long one. Thank you for sticking with me. I really appreciate it. The last few topics are coming. We're talking about waist belts and some core work, maybe one or two more videos, and then I'm going to follow up the entire series with a full giant Q&A to cover anything else I missed. So if you do have questions to throw in for that Q&A, put those down below and I will add them to that video and address your issue. Make sure you like and subscribe. Thanks for all the support. And until the next video, I will see you guys in the outdoors. Take care of yourselves. Ruck up.